the magic box. Hi, I am Avik and welcome to the magic box. See, it's a magical number, you know. You must have heard of the three blind mice. Or at least the three musketeers. Anyway, since the days of yore, magicians have always believed in the power of three. That's why there are three stages to a magic trick. The first stage, where the magician sets up the trick, is called the pledge. The second stage, which is the essential magic part of the trick and can make or break it, is called the turn. And the third stage is, wait for it, drum roll please, Ta -da! the prestige, which is in essence the revelation in which you show the end result of the trick. Alright, so now that you've heard of the three stages, let's forget the theory and move on to the practicals. So, without further ado, let's kick start this episode of the magic box. My pledge is that I'm going to make this coin disappear. But first, I need to cover it with this salt shaker to give it some room to work my magic. And for that same purpose, I'm going to cover it with two napkins. And now let's see if I can make this coin disappear. Hocus pocus, salikazam, malikazoo, presto, presto, shazam! See? Coin's still here. I must say it's a very stubborn coin. Maybe it's just a little shy. Why don't you try it with one more napkin? There we go. But now, in case you think that I slipped the coin away while I was doing that, well, you're wrong. Now, should we continue? Alakazam, alakazam, hocus pocus, presto, presto, shazam! I really do hope it worked this time. The coin's still there, but... The salt shaker seems to have disappeared. It's kind of odd. Maybe I should rename this my disappearing salt shaker trick. <sighs> anyway, what did how it's done? So, should I tell you how I did it? Well, remember how I told you that I would make this coin disappear? That was the pledge of the trick. And unlike in other tricks, it was meant to distract the audience. Well, my aim was to make the salt shaker disappear, but drawing the audience towards the coin helped me a lot. I first put the salt shaker on the coin, then I covered it with two napkins. Like so. I put two napkins on the salt shaker and I'll explain why later. Now, I use some magic words and a little bit of razzle dazzle and then I show the audience that the coin is actually still there and hasn't disappeared. Next, I take another napkin and use it to cover my salt shaker yet again. And I reassure the audience that the coin is still there. Actually, I use this as an excuse to slip away the salt shaker. However, remember to keep the shape of the salt shaker in the napkin. Next, put the napkin, the empty napkin, back on top of the coin to show the audience that the salt shaker is still there, whereas you know you've actually taken it away. Now, use some more hocus pocusy magic -y words to make the audience think that you're invoking some sort of magic. And then, instead of showing them that the coin is still not vanished, just crush the napkins and surprise them all and then tell them that though the coin hasn't vanished, mysteriously, the salt shaker seems to have. And that's how you do my amazing vanishing salt shaker trick. It's as simple as that. If you want, you can even take the salt shaker back up from under the table or something like that to show the audience that it's actually penetrated through the table. Oh, that salt shaker trick was really tiring. So I'm digging into this vanilla ice cream. <laughs> And it is my favorite, you know. You just can't beat a classic flavor like that. Which is why my next trick is going to be a classic as well. I'm going to do a spoon bending trick, which is a staple of every magician's routine. So, I'll get right back to you on that. Now that that ice cream has got me going, I'm going to show you one of the most classic tricks that's there in every magician's routine. I'm going to show you how I can bend a spoon with nothing but the power of my mind. All of these are just normal spoons, not even too expensive. See, there's nothing odd about these spoons, nothing too magical. But what I'm going to do with them is something amazing. Now here I have the spoon. You can see it's quite normal. And now I will compel the forces of magnetism and metal to help me bend the spoon with my mind. Oh, great forces of the metal, I command you to make this spoon dance to my tune. And let it begin. And there you have it, 
I have bent the spoon with nothing but my mind. It's as simple as that. So, do you want to know how it's done? The secret behind it is actually very, very easy. For this, you need at least two spoons and they must be of a very cheap quality. Now, while you show the audience that one spoon is normal, you can tap it on the table to show that there's nothing odd about the spoon. Now, when you show the spoon to the audience, make sure to cover the bent part with your fingers so it does not look like it's bent and it looks completely straight. Now, while you're trying to bend the spoon with your mind, shake it a little so you fool the audience and play with their minds. It's actually all about perception and eventually it looks like you bent the spoon with just the power of your mind. It's as simple as that. This is a really fun and simple trick that you can do absolutely anywhere, in a restaurant, in a party, wherever. But remember not to keep bending all your mother's spoons, otherwise she might get just a tad bit angry. As you can see, I'm back to my vanilla ice cream, because I'm still quite exhausted. But it seems to taste much better with the bent spoon. Anyways, have you noticed how the most seemingly mysterious tricks are often the easiest to perform? Like that, my next trick is one of the most simple, but the most amazing. And with the help of it, I can read your mind. But until then, ice cream. Now I'm all prepared for my next trick, which is a really fun and simple card trick. But to do it, I need an assistant. So I'm going to call Shivang. Hi, Avik. Hi, Shivang. So, I have here a deck of cards. Now, I'm going to start dealing it out into four piles. What like do that. I have to do? Could you just keep dealing in four piles like I just did? Okay. This card trick is really, really fun and simple. It actually needs almost no preparation. Now that we have our four piles dealt out, I am going to ask Shivang to do a few things for me. What do I need to do? First, can you pick out any random card from the middle of this pile? Now, memorize the card. Don't show me the card. Memorize it and show it to the camera. There we go. Now we just put it on top and I'm going to cut this pile. Now, we move on to the next pile. So again, can you show a random card from the middle of this deck? This sure. Card, and then memorize it. There we go. Now we just put it back on top of the pile and we cut it. Now as before, in the third pile, can you pick any random card? Don't show it to me, but memorize it and show it to the camera. There we go. Now I'll just put it on top and cut the pile. And we'll do the same, last and final pile. There we go. Now I'm just going to make it one big bunch again. Now, I'm just going to cut it a few times. Shivang, would you like to cut it once as well? Sure. There you go. Now I'm going to do some magic to define the cards that you took out from this pile. Oh, alakazam, 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 shazam, shazam, hogas, burgas, resto! And it's done. One of the cards you took out was the two of hearts, correct? Yes. Another one was the eight of spades. Yes, this is right. Another one was the jack of diamonds. Yes. And the last was the two of clubs. All cards are right. How can you do this? Magic! Nah, I'm kidding. There's actually a secret behind my trick. But I usually don't tell people my secrets. Oh. But because you're children, I'm gonna tell you how I did my trick. Cool! So, do you want to know how I did my amazing card mind reading trick? The secret to my amazing card mind reading trick is just a little bit of preparation. 
What I did was I pre-prepared the deck of cards. I put all the queens at the bottom and I put all the kings on the top. So that there are four queens at the bottom and there are four kings on the top. Wondering how this plays out into our trick? Well, when you deal the four decks, there's always going to be one king at the bottom of the deck and one queen at the top of the deck. How did it help you to guess my cards? Well, it's as simple as this. When you take a card out from the middle of the pack and you put it on top, then when you cut the deck, the card is always sandwiched between the king and the queen. Like so. Cool, I get it. Exactly. Now we'll do it once more. See, when you take any random card from the middle of the deck and put it on top and again cut it, it will always be between the king and the queen. It's a good trick. I will try this at my home. Absolutely. This happens with all four packs of cards. So, all the four cards chosen out by your spectator will always be between the four kings and queens. It's as simple as that. Amazing, isn't it? Thank you so much for helping me, Shivang. Welcome. You must have figured out by now that magic is all about being smart. There's a secret to every trick and all you have to do is crack it. Well, we've been through many pledges, turns and prestiges today. So, without much ado, I bid you adieu. See you next time on The Magic Box. Ta-da!